Hello, welcome to Secure the Continent on New Central Television. This is the program where we bring you up to speed with all the security happenings on the continent of Africa. I am your host, Benga Aboroa. Before we delve into today's uh, major topic of discussion, let me first bring you the major security headlines across Africa. In West Africa, Togo's President Fore Nasingbe is to now oversee the armed forces amidst growing security concerns. In East Africa, Al-Shabaab kills two policemen and civilians in Kenya. And an armed group in northern Mali pulls out of peace talks in Algiers. And also, Iberian prosecutor seeks life imprisonment for four suspects over 2016 beach attack. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Today and Secure the Continent, our focus is on the Ford coup in the Gambia. On Tuesday, news broke out that some officers in the Gambian army tried to overthrow President Adama Baro, but the Gambian Armed Forces High Command arrested four soldiers linked to the alleged coup. We have more details for you in this package. Coups in West Africa have become a recurring theme, with notable cases previously recorded in Burkina Faso, Mali and Guinea in the last two years, a futile attempt was also made in Guinea-Bissau earlier in the year. The latest of such incidents of attempted coup happened in the Gambia on the 20th of December when some soldiers and their accomplices failed in an attempt to overthrow the government of President Adama Barrow. The Gambia has been one of West Africa's most peaceful states, enjoying long years of ease and political stability, a situation that may be tagged a privilege in the sub-region. Although the Gambian military was quick to deny the coup, reports have claimed that coup attempts were indeed made. President Barrow, on his resumption into office in 2016, sacked top military officials loyal to former President Yahya Jame. His reliance on foreign forces has courted criticisms from locals. The Gambia of Barrow deploys Senegalese, Ghanaian and Nigerian troops to steer the wheel of its security. With West Africa experiencing another attempted coup, more questions are being raised about the state of politics in the sub-region. Why is West Africa prone to coup attempts? Who is behind the coup attempt in the Gambia? Uh, joining me live to discuss all of this, I have a high-powered panel. I have Imano Ukashu, who is an advocate of the High Court in Tanzania. I uh, have Essa uh, Njay, political science lecturer at the University of the Gambia. And also for Bakari Jame, a legal consultant. He joins in from the Gambian capital, Banjul. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me on Secure the Continent. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I'd like to start with Fabakari Jame in Banjul. What was your reaction to the news of this attempted coup on the government of President Adama Barrow? Well, I am very surprised because, uh, first, um, those accused of plotting this coup are very junior officers. They are not even officers. They are not commissioned officers. They are land scoppers. Uh, they are just above the private soldiers. So they don't have access to arms. They don't have uh, command, uh, any, any, any authority with them. And they don't have uh, people that they can mobilize to be able to overthrow a government. And my second surprise is the fact that uh, there would be, it will be very difficult to orchestrate a coup in the Gambia because there are uh, some uh, ECOWAS soldiers stationed in, the, stationed in the Gambia, and uh, some of these ECOWAS soldiers are even protecting the president. So uh, embarking on a coup to dislodge a, a democratic elected, elected president uh, who is guarded by foreign forces I think it's a suicide mission. So I'm very surprised that some people among the, uh, within the military are thinking on this line. So, yeah, but um, would you, also, I mean, for Bakary, you just described uh, the level of those who were arrested as very junior uh, non commissioned officers, the rank and file, lance corporal, corporals. Uh, would you really call it a coup or it was mutinous, you know, soldiers that were not happy with the condition? Can we really say? I mean, because you mentioned that the president is guarded, he has an elite uh, Senegalese forces that, that, that look after him, uh, that they're in the president's close protection unit. So this seems like a suicide mission. Absolutely. 
uh, if you look at the current situation in the Gambia and you look at uh, the security attached to the president, it would be a suicide mission for a, such a junior soldier to just wake up one day and say he, he or she is going to uh, go to a, a government of the president guarded by foreign forces. And above all, uh, the fact that these are uh, some very junior officers, as you said, um, we are still waiting for the conclusion of the investigations, but it could also be a mutiny among the military. But military also has denied this. Uh, because Al Kamba Times have uh, interviewed the uh, military spokesperson who denied the fact that there was even a coup in the first place. And the following day, there was a, a press release from the uh, government spokesperson detailing that you know there are some people that wanted to overthrow the government and their their attempt was was foiled. Uh, mm -hmm. And also the fact that. Uh, 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 the government uh, press release did not provide enough information, created a lot of confusion. And so these are some of the uh, issues that uh, we are all, uh, that caught everyone by surprise. And we are still uh, struggling to understand what is really going on because we don't have access to enough information in order to ascertain what had really transpired. Uh, thank you, Fabakari. Asa, you're there in Banjul in the Gambia, and Fabakari just ended its uh, submission. I say, you know, we're still looking for answers to questions, but I'm still going to put this question to you. What would you attribute, or what do you think is the reasoning behind the latest uh, failed coup from all the information uh, you've gathered so far? Well, um, to answer that, let me let me begin by um, also saying, I mean, whether this is a surprise. Um, in the context of the Gambia, yes, it could be a surprise. But in a sub-regional context, uh, looking at West Africa, it has become the home of military coups um, of recent. Um, of course, like he said, these are junior officers like Lance Corporal. And one can tell you that, well, these people um, have no command role or responsibility. They cannot command... Um, even a unit, um, how will they be able to stage a coup? And if you look at the press release coming from um, the, 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 the press or the government, um, instead of answering questions, um, the releases are raising more questions. Um, the press statements are raising more questions, more questions in the sense that, I mean, they're saying the, they, these are soldiers who are plotting. Okay, I'll just uh, move on to you for Bakary. What do we know so far about the circumstances behind the coup attempt and the individuals behind it and what could you well, attribute um, to this to this latest coup what what's the reasoning behind it um up to now we don't have clear information as to what is the reason behind this attempted coup and also the, although the individuals behind it uh, they have mentioned names like uh, the ring leader that is uh, sana fadera uh, who is a very junior officer, and some other officers that are currently undergoing studies at the university, so uh, University of the Gambia for that matter. So the profiles of these individuals are not very well known, although, uh, we, like I mentioned, the real leader is known, and some other uh, uh, members uh, that they claim that they allege to have participated in this group are going to university and they are university students, and their families are claiming that uh, they have not been in active service for over two years. And also that they, some one one among them, his family claimed that you know he went to, he went to the barracks to collect his salary, and it was during that process he was arrested and detained. So uh, not much is known about them, but the fact remains that they are very young officers in the sense that they are corporals, lance corporal for that matter, and they don't have uh, any authority in the military that can. Uh, that one can say uh, if they launch a, a, a coup attempt, it could be successful in the sense that they don't have access to arms uh, in, uh, and they don't also have control and command over troops, which are very necessary in order to uh, engage in, in any successful coup d'etat. So basically, these are the uh, profiles of, the, of, of, of these individuals. And what noting is that there is an individual whose second name is mentioned, but his full name is not mentioned. So also this created a lot of confusion because uh, if you are a soldier in, 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 in the, uh, and, and you are paid by the government, we believe, you know, we reasonably believe that the government should be able to know your full name. Mm -hmm. But this person's full name was not even uh, communicated to the population up to now. So that also creates another confusion. So as I said, uh, the state claimed that they are undergoing an investigation. So we are still waiting for the conclusion of their investigation. I think their investigation, the outcome of their investigation, 
would shed light on uh, what really transpired. And another interesting thing is that uh, someone also has been uh, invited at the police station to also answer certain questions in respect to statements they have made uh, in the passing of uh, Mahmoud Sabali, who was also arrested and detained we'll, for... We'll get to, we'll get to Mahmoud Sabali's uh, case in the course of our uh, conversation. It's, it's an issue I uh, really want us to... Uh, Luca, thank you for back away. Now, back to you, Asaf, uh, before we left uh, that connection. You were talking about, you know, the West African subregions notoriety of being uh, the cool belt of Africa, and also the fact that some of this uh, alert perpetrators of this attempted coup were very junior officers, and how the press releases of the governments has left more questions uh, to be answered. Would you really call this a coup in the sense of it? And what might be the reasoning behind it? Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> that's it to say. I mean, it's, it's really um, nothing is clear for now. Um, unless the investigations are, are done, then we will be able to establish uh, whether this was in fact an attempted coup or not. But I remember also a um, few years ago when this government came, um, you know, there was a time when they arrested some soldiers um, who were suspected of um, plotting um, a coup. I mean, they were just con having a conversation on, on WhatsApp platform and they had to arrest them just based on that. So if you look at the press release, the first press release or so statement of the government, they said clearly that based on intelligence reports gathered, you know, it suggests that there are some, um, or indicates that there are some soldiers who are who are plotting, who are plotting to overthrow the government. So I want to believe that probably um, this is an intelligence report that the government has just gathered, um, that, well, these are people who have an interest to stage a coup or whatever, but whether the attempt itself was actually done, like um, Fabakari said, these are junior officers who have no control or command responsibility or role, no unit is under their control, they don't have access to the armories, and these are very important for you to be able to um, stage a coup. So whether, you know, the, the attempt was itself was done, um, that is something that, you know, needs to be cleared. Um, when the government is done with its investigations. But like I said, um, West Africa has become the home of coups. Um, and of course, if you look at the typologies of coups, um, you get to understand that there are different factors that can be responsible for the outbreak of a coup. Um, you know, when we talk about breakthrough coup, where long-standing authoritarian leaders are removed, but we also have what we call guardian coup, when the people feel like, um, the military feel like they have a moral duty or responsibility to rescue the civilian population from an inept and corrupt government, when there's economic hardship, um, you know, rampant corruption, um, high cost of living, among a whole lot of social economic challenges. These are things that can arrive the situation for, you know, military coups um, to take place. And of course, you know, if you look at the Gambia, we have economic hardship, um, corruption is rampant, and a whole lot of other issues that we are dealing with as a country. Of course, the other type is also what we call a veto coup, when the military feels like their interest is at stake. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I will connect with the presence of economic forces in the country, um, knowing fully well that, like Fabarika intimated, um, the security of even the presidency is not entirely in the hands of the of Gambian forces. Is not the security of the country itself is not entirely in the hands of Gambian men and women in uniform. So it's in the hands of foreign forces. And we want to reflect back to 1994. One of the factors for the coup not only was rampant corruption highlighted, but also foreign forces were closer to the presidency. And it's the same thing that is happening. So um, that is why I said it could be a surprise at what point, but also when you reflect on the general socioeconomic situation, but also when you look at the interests of the military, you get to um, you know, understand that, well, it shouldn't come as a big surprise that you know, the army, um, some, some elements of the army have an interest to stage a coup. Thank you very much, uh, sir. I would like to bring in uh, Emmanuel Ukashu in Tanzania. Now, Emmanuel, from what you've heard so far, uh, I mean, everybody knows that West Africa has seen a rash of coups and coup attempts over the past two years. New government seized power in Guinea, Mali, and Burkina Faso, while Guinea-Bissau averted a coup attempt earlier this year. Now, West Africa has had the dubious title of the coup belt of Africa. Would you say there's a coup contagion, and what will you attribute to this almost copycat uh, wave of coups in, in the West Africa subregion? First and foremost, first and foremost, it's very, in the African continent, we have been experiencing the West part of our brothers and sisters, 
a, a very enormous in the mushrooming of coup d'etat. It is very wonderful because for us in East Africa, the issue of coup d'etat is only for those countries who have got a historical background of a war, such as Uganda, Sudan, and so on. But in West Africa, it, is a, it has been a, a usual, if I can say so, or I can use a polite word by saying that it has been a very horrible situation. I've just witnessed it last year, six countries from the western part, from Chad, Burkina Faso, name them to be few, experiencing the same coup d'etat issues. And the latest one of today is about the Gambia issues of attempted coup d'etat. So for us, it's very horrible, and we're wondering what is this happening. But if we go to the line of it, it's because of the historical background of the West Africa. First of all, you can, you can admit that the literates, a lot of people are so knowledgeable of, the, of, the, of, the, of their country and their need. So if you, there's knowledge of that means, if a person with a PhD can be a military, and then that's another thing. Or you can find out is about the hardship of the people, about the youth who have been not been employed, and so on. So there are numerous issues that are facing there, and the only result they have is about the historical background of the coup d'etat, of which is very horrible in the diplomatic context. And uh, among of the strongest things that we can say and we can learn from the Western part is about ECOWAS. And the ECOWAS, the Article 58, has been very good in harmonizing the situation of political security in the region. I could imagine the situation could be worse if that could not be there, or if there could not be a good economical integration that is harmonized this political security. It would have been a very massacre. So the role of, West, of ECOWAS in the Western part, it is really very vital. And they, maybe it's the one which has been protecting and intervening to the peace and harmonization. Because if it could have been anything to be regulated in the Western part, as we see now, there have been a lot of complicated there. It is very horrible, I can imagine. So for us who are in the eastern part of the continent, we're just wondering how this happened, how this be there, and all that. But for sure, it's very it's not a pleasing story because the issue of coup d'etat is not something that is good because it goes to the war, it goes to the treason. As you mm -hmm. see, this one has just been a very junior officer who have been attempting such a thing. And you can wonder, a person with no order or command, how can he or she attempt to do a coup d'etat? Because Otherwise, it is now going to be a very suicidal or it is going to be a treason in one way or another way. Because if you have attempted to the attack and you have failed it, the consequence is treason. And I think so in our country, for instance, Tanzania, treason is among the things that will never be bearable. So I don't know how I am trying to think about the youth who have been trying such a thing. It's a very serious thing in case if they will be properly killed. Okay, thank you very much, Manu. Uh, now, as uh, the army said, it's in pursuit of three other alleged accomplices and investigations are ongoing. Are there any updates in this? And what's the current situation of things in the Gambia? Is there heavy military presence on the streets of Banjo? Well, um, there, there's no heavy military presence. In fact, um, when this thing um, was reported, um, um, that was Tuesday, one can say, um, People went about their normal businesses, even in the capital, Banjul, as small as it is. Um, there was no, you know, um, sense of panic anywhere. Um, some people probably were, in fact, were not even aware of this. And that is why some people will tend to question whether this was really an attempt. Probably it was just a plot. Um, and they did not even, um, you know, uh, um, make any attempt to overthrow the government. Uh, but I, I, I also think... Um, you know, the, the reason why the army is even, I mean, surprisingly, the army is not even talking. I mean, it's the government spokesperson that is making statements, but the army is even um, a bit quiet about this. It was only, like Fabakari said, um, the government spokesperson, uh, sorry, the, 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 the spokesperson for the deputy spokesperson for the army, um, you know, talked to Al Kamba Times um, to say that he was not even aware of a coup when this thing was reported on Tuesday. He said he was not even aware of a coup. So it was later that the government had to come up with a statement. And the military, so it seems like the army is even quiet about this whole thing. Um, they're not making statements. Um, it is the government spokesperson that is speaking on behalf of the government, making statements um, that the investigations are on. But I, I mean, I think also there's something very important that we need to talk about. Um, and that has to do with... Um, why is this thing even happening? One could question, where is the security sector reform? Um, you know, this is a reform agenda or program that the government came with since um, 2017, September 2017, it was launched. Policy documents like the national security policy, national security strategy, amongst others have been developed, but the right legal framework is not there. Um, we don't have a national security bill 
um, that will also help legally operationalize the Office of the National Security. So the security sector reform, even the, the, the ones that are providing the financial assistance like the European Union, one said that the reform process is going at a very slow pace. And if you randomly talk to Gambians, they tell you that some of them will tell you that the reform process is not even going anywhere. So the government has to ask itself this um, fundamental question. How far have we gone with the reform process? Because the reform process is supposed to um, professionalize the army, um, not only the army, the members of the security sector, but also instill those democratic values, principles, and standards to ensure that they are subjected to civilian management, control, and accountability. But that's not happening. And of course, if you look at part of the mandate of the economic is also to help um, Gambia in a security sector reform. So if we have economic forces present in the country, we have um, the security sector reform being launched since 2017, and yet we're talking about, the government is talking about having the military, some elements of the military still thinking of staging a coup. Then it means that there's something fundamentally wrong with the reform process that the government um, has launched since 2017, um, and they really need to look into that. Thank you, Asaf. Uh, just before we go on a break, I'd like to uh, direct this question to Fabakari. Fabakari, the campaign manager of the main opposition party, Mamodou Sabali, was detained over a widely circulated a TikTok video which suggests that Mr. Barrow will be unseated before next year's local government elections. Uh, what's your take on this? And has he been linked to this uh, coup attempt? Well, uh, our understanding, the, uh, the population's understanding is that he has been arrested. And that's, that's, that's what the statement also uh, of the police have indicated, that he's arrested because he has made certain utterances. That... In which he said that the, you know, the uh, uh, government of Adamawa will be unseated before the upcoming mayoral elections. So he is arrested in connection with these statements. But uh, the issue now is uh, whether these, these statements have any uh, connection to the uh, alleged coup attempt. Well, this this is a, this is something that uh, we don't I don't have any information in, re in respect to. But. We are waiting for the outcome of the police investigation, and we are also waiting uh, on what the police would, would do next in terms okay. of what... Thank, uh, th thank you for that update, uh, for Bakari. Thank you for uh, clearing the situation uh, with regards to Mamadou Sabali. It's a fine place to go on a break. Uh, you're watching Secure the Continent, a new central television. Uh, when we return, uh, we would have... Uh, Emmanuel Ukashu and Fabakari um, Jama as uh, NJ uh, would say thank you to you at this point. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you for staying with us on New Central Television. If you're just joining, this is Secure the Continent. And we have been discussing the Gambia coup attempt. I still have here uh, with me Emmanuel Ukashu, advocate of the High Court of Tanzania. And uh, I also have Fabakari Jame, a legal consultant, joining live from the Gambian capital, Banjo. Now, um, I'll go to Essa. Essa, from what we've... Um, I beg your pardon, I'll go to... Uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, from what we've heard so far, has there been any information or indication that this coup attempt has been linked to the uh, former president of the Gambia, Yaya Jame, because it said that, you know, there's still so many loyalists in the military and uh, also in the Gambian society. Is there any connection between him, who is currently in exile in Equatorial Guinea, and this coup? From the national news, they've been speculating that what has been attempted or deemed to be attempted could be attacked is associated with the former president, Yaya, who was at the Equatorial Guinea for the exile, and they're associating the, the so-purported culprits who have been caught to be associated with the Yaya. But to my option, or to my opinion, is that that is very, very minor because if a person has been not in power, it's not easy to attack the so-called the, the coup d'etat because if you need to do coup d'etat, it's a very serious field machinery. 
and you cannot you, in the in the war in the act of a crime it is a plot of more than one people is a conspiracy theory so you cannot say just one president who is not is a he at ex exile can coordinate such a coup d'etat that cannot be practically impossible but uh, since there is investigation machinery and the coup d'etat must be a, 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 a one of the very important physical persons to be caught if they've been caught the four core people with the crime then the, the role of police is to interrogate them and to use a very serious security intelligence and to know who are the people behind such a move. If the culprits, they can be mentioning, or they have been making a mentioning that the, Yaya, the former president is the one in, indeed using the, such a thing, then that's a very serious thing because in the practical means he has to be withdrawn from the exile and face charges in his own country. But if less than that, not the plot, then it has has to be in other way around to be facing the purported crime or charges as the people have been caught. So as you see that in the current situation, the only people who have been saying about the treason and the so-called attacks are the people who are not even security. I just spokespersons. The security have not given information clear to the people. That which means the security, the role that which are not being told to the people, that means it it gives an adverse inference or it creates a doubt whether that is political insinuation or that is it something to do with the war setup or political or what is the, with the discussion indeed so in some cases leaving a lot of things to be discussed around while we were talking of a copy that is a very sad thing so i could not expect the government security officers senior security officers the spokesperson security, security officers do not make it a statement or the president himself could not come with the proclamation and you know that the the the, the a new constitution of Gambia has given a very good good provisions for security purposes and for the president to call for the emergence. The president has not even called for the emergence up to now, an act of emergence. That you can think that if that is a serious thing to that extent, why the president is reluctant to give a cooperation, the current president? Why? Maro is not saying anything about that. Why the, the security officials are not saying anything about that? So it's living a lot of uh, unknown matters Unanswered be questions. behind it. Thank you, Emmanuel. Now, for Bakari, the Gambia's Minister of Justice, Abubakar Tambadu, the, said the former president will be arrested and charged with crimes he committed during his over two decades in charge. I'm talking about Yahya Jame. Do you see this happening anytime? And what will be the security implications if they go ahead to do this? Well, uh, prosecuting the uh, Jame is, uh, is possible, but uh, uh, the, whether the state is capable of doing it and whether there is a political will to do it is another question. Uh, recently, the state went to uh, uh, Nigeria. They had a meeting with ECOWAS in order to facilitate prosecution of the uh, Jame in a third country. Uh, and recently, there is a National Assembly member who says he would want the uh, Ajame to be prosecuted in Ghana so that uh, the victims of uh, the Ghanaians, that he, uh, the families of the Ghanaians that he killed, could witness his trial in Ghana. So uh, the state is raising the issue of security when it comes to prosecuting the Ajame in the Gambia. So there is no, there, there is no, uh, affirmative action taken by the state to prosecute the Ajame in the Gambia, even though they said they wanted to do it, but they want to do it in a third country different from the Gambia. So this is the position now. Uh, although the TRRC has uh, recommended for his prosecution, and, and the state also has adopted that those recommendations, and now they, they said they are working on to, to, you know, to put those recommendations in action. And we've seen, like I said, uh, the, the, them reaching out to uh, other countries like the United States of America and also the ECOWAS Commission for their support in order to bring the Ajame to justice. So bringing the Ajame to justice, I think it's possible, but uh, like the state, they indicated that... But, but, but he has, sorry to interrupt you for Bakary, Yaya Jame does have loyalists in the Gambian military and society. So if he's brought to justice, uh, would it not, you know, cause a ripple effect and shake things up a bit? And uh, you don't want to rock the boat uh, well, too uh, much? Personally, I don't think so. Personally, I don't think so. I think uh, it's just a matter of a political will. Because as I said earlier, there are, uh, there are other forces stationed in the Gambia. Like the economic forces are still in the country mm -hmm. and they can provide the necessary security 
to prosecute anyone in this country. So site uh, security has a challenge to prosecute in Yajame. I see that not, I see that has of no reason. I see that like a uh, lack of political will to do so. And also maybe there are some people who do not want the Yajame to come back to the Gambia because when he comes back to the Gambia, their position will be threatened. And also maybe uh, some of them have taken uh, his, uh, are part of people that have taken his properties. So for him to come back to the Gambia, they don't want that to happen. So that's why they are citing those reasons for trying to prosecute him outside the Gambia. But for me, I think anybody is capable of being prosecuted in the okay. Gambia so long as there is security. And there is economic forces in this country that, can, that are capable of providing that security. And even if they do not have the necessary manpower, the state, the Gambia government can be able to uh, uh, talk to its uh, regional partners to be able to provide them this necessary security they needed. Thank you very much uh, for Bakari. Emmanuel, the, uh, I do recall you mentioned ECOWAS in your opening uh, submission uh, and you know its role as a force for stability in the West African sub-region. Now, the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, condemned the attempted military takeover of the government and praised the Gambian army for thwarting it. What else can ECOWAS do to prevent coups in the sub-region beyond just sanctions? And condemnations. It is the resolution, which is on peacekeeping under the Article 3, Sub 1, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of the protocol, which is the cementing the Article 58 of the treaty, the role of the Air Corps. That one of the things is to protect the, 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 the state parties, a second thing is to condemn like that and to put sanction and also to provide the resource. For instance, if there is issues of machinery, there is also an Air Corps court. There also there is also issues to provide maybe the criminal justice for instance if the president that is former president is one of the culprits has to be taken to ICC and the Gambian issue in the Gambian state is one of the state members in the ICC. So all that is the role of the ECOWAS plays so. And not only that, ECOWAS has to go further because they've got the issues of of jointing state parties of the military. You can you, you consolidate of the military powers. So they can also send a, a military to assist the Gambian and protect the security in the Gambian, especially in Banjul, the state, in the city centre, and so forth. So the role of, of ECOWAS in this it's a very fundamental and primary it has to be attributed as it has begun its role. So the ECOWAS thing is the only thing that can begin at the first. And you, if you can take into the record, it's also been used to look for even other other countries, if as in the state parties who have not been reluctant to be in power or has been using an constitutional means to be in power, it has been taken into action, for instance, in Cote d'Ivoire and so forth, once a while. So the role of the ECOWAS is very strong in this particular moment, and it is highly to be needed as it has started playing its role, and also as a country, because just to put the machinery for the peacekeeping in the Gambia in the immediate. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Now, for Bakari, President Adama Barrow has been distrustful of the Gambian army, some will say, you know, for good reason, because this is the second attempt, uh, the second coup attempt in his administration. Senegalese soldiers are in charge of the security. The main international airports and seaports are guarded by Nigeria and Ghanaian soldiers. Many Gambians feel he is undermining the country's sovereignty. What are your thoughts on this? in chief of the Gambia Armed Forces. And um, Gambia uh, Armed Forces is a state institution. So I think the continuous presence of foreign troops in this country will demoralize the Gambia Armed Forces and also would, uh, would uh, threaten the sovereignty of this country. However, I think the problem lies at the, 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 the stalled uh, security sector reform. Uh, because when he came on, when he came to power, uh, he he undertook the uh, security sector reform. But this security sector reform is incomplete up to now. So, uh, in order for him to be able to uh, control his forces and to be able to uh, be in charge of the military, I think he has to complete the security sector reform. Because having foreign forces stationed in the Gambia is not sustainable. And it is only going to create that uh, kind of uh, uh, division between the Gambia Armed Forces and other system security forces around the, uh, the region. So the best option is to uh, implement the security sector reform. 
uh, bring in professional military officers and also establish a good relationship with the uh, with, with, with the military with, with the military uh, through this uh, through this means i think he can be able to uh, do away with the uh, Senegalese forces and all the forces that are currently stationed in the Gambia. If yeah. you look at the Gambia armed forces, they are capable. They are capable of uh, maintaining the security of this country. But first, we must, you know, they, are, we, we need, we, they need to undergo a serious reform. Once that reform is completed, there is nothing to fear about again. Now, Fabakari, what is the content of this uh, security sector reform? Uh, that would make the Gambian Armed Forces professional? And why do you think uh, President Barrow is stalling on his implementation of the security sector reforms? Well, um, uh, for me personally, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would not attribute the, uh, the delay of the security sector reform to the president. I think uh, the, uh, the president should be supported by the technocrats that he employed especially those in the area of the national security advisor and also the we are, uh, the minister for uh, defense likewise the armed forces command these are key partners in this process as the president is not an expert in security situations that's why he 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 also uh, got in the office of the national security advisor in order to be able to advise him on some of these issues and to be able to take drastic actions on some of these issues so I think, uh, you know, these offices should work together in order to uh, make security sector reform a reality. I miss, the, uh, I, I miss out the, the National Assembly, which has mm. another fundamental role in ensuring that this security sector reform is completed. Because without this security sector reform, the uh, security situation in the country would not be, uh, would, would not be in the right form. So there is a need for it to be completed, and once it is completed, there also is a need to have a, a phase out in plan for the economic forces because they cannot be here forever. Already, uh, there is a general discontent in the country that they should go out of the country, they should go back to their, their mm -hmm. countries because there is no war in this country. And in fact, Gambia is more peaceful than, than some of their home countries. So Very what true. are they doing in this country? Mm -hmm. Yes, so and they are saying that they currently there are a lot of uh, 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 serious crimes that are that are being committed in, in the Sahel in the, by these bandits and also the terrorist groups. So that's where they are needed than in the Gambia. So they must go back to their countries. And some of them are saying that no. Uh, some of them are arguing that they are here mostly because of the interest of this, uh, of Senegal. They are not here for the interest of the Gambia or the, for the interest of the Gambian head of state. They are here because Senegal wants them to be here. And Senegal wants that to make that because Senegal wants to have a, a total control over the, the Gambia. So some of these allegations are also are, are also some things that uh, other people are arguing. Okay, thank you for Bakari. Uh, Emmanuel, what can the for Bakari did talk about the all important security sector reforms? But what can the government of Gambia do to prevent coups and attempted coups? As this is the second attempt and Barrow's administration, and is just a year into his second term in office. First of all, the President Barrow has to restructure the security intelligence system. Second, he has to create, the, he has to exchange the senior military personnel at the military and the police and whatever. Third, he must come up with a good civics plan to the people and engage the people in transparent and the responsible parliament in order to come up with the good reforms of the laws that are favorable to the people. Fourth, to create employment and to create a very good stability of the people that to feel the ownership of the country. Because those who need to do coup d'etat are the things that are marginalized, those are not favored. Fifth, he has to come up with a plan of the, of the security plan of the future and to seek a very good international support. For instance, the ECOWAS, I think so my friend was speaking that it's a sin to, 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 to seek military. But no, you can seek more military in order to, to, to immense and to solidify the security parameters of the, of the Gambia. So this is one thing that President Barrow has to come up with very loud and clear to the people and to seek. And whenever you seek the, the meter of security people to come and assist you, it's not a sin, it's not a failure, but it's a courage and a source of protecting your people and the lives of the people. Because the fear of that, you can come up in a war crime, which is to be more worse than how it is now. That's what I can advise.
Thank you, uh, Emmanuel. Finally, for Bakuri, just before we wrap this up, eight soldiers led by one of Jammeh's former military aides plotted to overthrow Baro, the Degea he came into power. They were sentenced to jail in 2019 and treason and conspiracy. And now we have this latest coup. Is there something about the uh, social, political, economic setup in the Gambia that makes it so susceptible to coup attempts? Um, I think uh, the issue has to do with uh, uh, mistrust. The, um, the state institutions, uh, sorry, the, the military and the security, there is a general distrust between the security sectors. That's, that's, the, that, that's what I believe. And also uh, the fact that there are still many German loyalists in the army can also be another cause. That's why uh, uh, all this is happening. And the third issue is the fact that uh, the Gambian army feel demoralized. They feel that they are more capable than some of the forces that are brought into the country, uh, but they are left out. And uh, it's a foreign force that is even providing protection to each, his, their commander in chief. So I think these are some of the issues that uh, the country needs to face and deal with it. And I think it is high time to uh, come up with solutions. In uh, uh, with solutions has to how to uh, how to face out the presence of foreign forces in the Gambia and also return the full security and protection of the presidency and the country to the Gambia security forces, especially the military. I think uh, this would uh, create that kind of uh, a sense of trust. Uh, between uh, the, between the leadership and the military, and also I think uh, 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 it would uh, it would also help the president to have a full control over his troops. Thank you uh, very much for joining us and secure the continent uh, for Bakari Jame from Banjo in the Gambia, and also Emmanuel Ukashu, advocate of the High Court. He joined him from Tanzania and SA in J, political science lecturer at the University of Gambia. We do appreciate your time and contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, one of the ways of ensuring that coups do not happen is to ensure that there are adequate reforms that would address the gaps, the lacuna, but also for the government to be more transparent with the population, ensuring that the government's challenges in this country are addressed. The government of the Gambia needs to reform the country's political, social, an economic and security structure to stop the military from taking power. Thanks for being a great company and thanks for joining me on the Secure the Continent uh, today. I'm Benga Aboroa. See you next time. Bye-bye.